Okay, we're back out here again to see what this dark figure is, or at least get a comparison in size and try and pick up some hair samples. So that's basically the view there. Uh, you can see the, the the same features as in the photograph. Now he is, or it is, right down in that area. So he's right about there. Okay, you can see that little green dot there uh, at the, near the bottom of the screen. That's the laser. So we're going to have a go and have a look and see what we can see. Try and collect some leaves. I can't see any movement here. So I took the bag of leaves home and searched each leaf and stick for hairs. It takes hours but it's a good way to find them. When you get down to the debris at the end you can use a paintbrush to uh, search through the last of the litter. It's a great way to find those small hairs. So here's the hair samples. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, these, are the, these are the ones that are found off the ground. The one on the left there is very long and it's entangled in a piece of debris off the ground and some sort of crud. So uh, we'll have a look at them under the microscope and we'll make casts and then run them through the uh, uh, hair ID program. Only five of the samples were actual hairs and the other two were vegetation. Hair number five I would say is 90% common ringtail possum. I didn't do a cross section on these because I knew it was marsupial. Here you can see the internal structure and the matching results. The cuticle scale. The hair profile. And the distribution. Hair number four is marsupial as well and I'm 90% sure it's a wallaroo. Here again is the internal structure, the cuticle scale, the profile, and the distribution. Hair number three is also marsupial because of the internal structure but I don't know which one and even the documentation says it's difficult to determine but it's a marsupial. Hair number two is a very odd hair to be finding in the forest. Now it is possible that it was already in the bag but I found it in the middle of the leaf litter. Uh, it seems to be threaded right through the middle of some debris and is tangled up in some fibrous material suggesting that it was already on the forest floor. Now there are two possible matches which are the short beak to echidna and man. It matches all the search criteria for the echidna except for the hair profile which doesn't fit at all so basically there's no such thing as a long haired echidna. It matches human hair perfectly from the cross section to the internal structure, the cuticle scale, the hair profile with a maximum length of 800 millimeters, and obviously the distribution. Hair number one is also very odd. It partially matches the southern hairy nose wombat, but the wombat has the wrong internal structure, the wrong profile, and a changing scale pattern. 
It also partially matches a feral pig, but the pig has the wrong internal structure and the wrong profile. The closest match is human hair. Here's the cross section, the internal structure, the scale, the distribution and the profile. Hair number one and number two also partially match chimpanzee hairs. So here's the two views. Now my video camera is at the correct distance but it should have been slightly to the left. But this is very close and I spent about an hour lining these two photos up. So whatever it is has a head noticeably smaller than mine. And in this photo it looks like an ape. I mean that's just my opinion. So you know don't start getting upset or jumping up and down. The other photo looks like a kangaroo until you have a closer look. Notice the gap between the ears between both photos. There's quite a bit of distance and the ears seem to be on the side of the head not on the top like a kangaroo. And the actual snout seems to be shorter like a bear. I did a search and there's no Australian animal of this size with a head like that or large rounded ears on the side of the head. So realistically what did we find? One hair that matches human hair perfectly another hair which matches human hair closer than any other Australian animal and we have two photographs of something that I can't identify. So why am I finding human hairs in the middle of nowhere? And this isn't the first time. That is not a wide-eared, short-snouted kangaroo with broad shoulders. So what is it? And why do I keep finding this stuff?